Okay, so I managed to actually open the slides again. Um, so I closed it and reopened it. And okay, so when, where were we? I think we were in slides four, so. Huh? So this is the security risk preparation. So we saw the categories and then and here we have uh, undesirable events mapped with the assets. So here are the assets, like we have information. And it could be damaged by physical uh, uh, physical category threat, physical threat. So these are the threats, like a breach of information. So this is cat categorized as physical. All right. Okay. Hella, we're gonna show the listing. Okay. Hella, we're gonna do a listing of possible threats. So, depending on the rigor of the security risk assessment, there are two approaches for listing the possible threats. First, we have the checklist and judgment. Secondly, we have the threat agent and undesirable event pairing. So I feel like how it's used Akhtar, you know, we, we pair the undesirable event and the threat agent. Uh, this is like more often used, el pairing. Uh, so for the checklist and judgment, uh, we select the threats uh, from a general list, such as the one on slide 24. Let's go back to slide 24. Um, Okay, so where's the list? Maybe he means this. Um, and then the term can use judgment to apply the list to a specific organization. Good enough for many security risk assessments, but it's not considered rigorous. Uh, pairing the threat agent and the undesirable event, yeah, with the threat and the event is actually more rigorous and could result in a very extensive list so hadi el pairing so we have an undesirable event and we have a, a threat um, threat agent threat agent an insider can can cause some physical exposure to assets it's just threat and the the undesirable event threat agent and the undesirable event it's better to create a threat statement and when the pairing my asset okay let's show the threat statement so threat statements um, uh, it contains the threat components which are the threat agents and undesirable events and can be combined with the assets. So we have the agent, the event, and the asset. Uh, so they create the threat statement. A threat statement can be further refined with the addition of intention. So if we add the intention, then we have an additional um, an additional handle. Tayyip, validating the threat statement. Uh, so the final action when identifying threats is to validate the compiled list of threats of threat uh, of threat statements. So typically, sorry. Typically, only a fraction of the list is worth considering. Okay. Considering should be consideration should be based on the threat environment of the organization. A threat assessment team should use their experience, judgment, and common sense when assessing the validity of threat statements. Uh, factors affecting threat statement validity, uh, we look into the history, we look into the environmental factors, and we look into the business factors.
هدول بيقيموا ال red statement طيب validating red statements continued ال history so we look into the past security related incidents and it's a good indicator of what might happen in the future environmental factors could be so a lot like geography climate for physical threats يعني مثلا بقطر we don't have any physical threats in قطر يعني there's no earthquakes there's no storms facility size and configuration we have construction material مثلا size blah 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 we have the social and political climate for human threats so we validate the the threat statement by looking into the political and social climate and i think يعني مثلا هون عندنا crime rates يعني مثلا in قطر the crime rate is low so the crime is not very high يعني it this information can be used to validate the risk statement for business factors we have visibility for example the information that is present on the uh, on the websites or okay services performed for example some services or products are more dangerous so the services performed could be dangerous and the value of equipment and inventories طيب هل, how do we determine the expected controls so we try to identify the necessary security controls based on the previous analysis it's a useful practice um, we have absence of an expected control is a security risk oh, okay and um, organizations within some regulated industries require to have specific controls okay so اول شيء بنشوف ال analysis اللي سويناها ثانيا بنشوف الاورجنايزيشن اندستري وثالثا وي اسس as the assessment team may have additional expectations based on their experience so the security policy uh, for example the acceptable use policy in AUP uh, security operations security monitoring business continuity plan كل هاي الاشياء بتحدد لنا expected controls and the security organization adequate authority and resources so it depends on the staff skill of the staff and the resources but then in a security procedure um, yani we have the account system code maintenance طيب. So, what is the NIST expected security controls? ممكن إحنا نشوف ال NIST standard. The expected controls هي the firewall, security updates, antivirus, the firewall, malicious filtering, disable unnecessary applications, encryption. And كل هاي الأشياء backup. So هاي ال NIST controls that are for small office. Okay. هاي الأشياء اللي ممكن نعملها لل small businesses. مثلا a home office small business. في عنا ال enterprise اللي هي الشركة أكبر يعني medium to large businesses. ممكن نعمل segmentation for the internal networks 
we can centralize security application management so if we have high security so it depends on Hadi enterprise and we deal a lot with enterprise but let's say we have a banking system banking systems have high security so we need um, so if for example the healthcare systems banking systems كل هاي الاشياء so we need skilled administrators and we need regular vulnerability scans الهل... هاي هاي مفروض على فكره تكون محطوطه هون okay. بعدين عندنا ال legacy systems اللي هي الكستم uh, it varies widely okay. ال 